in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. We're continuing with volume 29, 550-1931. And uh, Jesus is uh, asking us to do our part. Our part is to pray, to call upon the divine will, to do our round of creation, round of redemption. Uh, entering into this gift more and more, that's, that's what our God is waiting for. So he says, now my daughter, listen to me. The most serious doubts, the gravest di difficulties that they have found in your writings are precisely these. Now, people have difficulty with Louisa. And he says, now I'm going to tell you what they are. He says, these are the, the, this is the difficulties that I, Jesus, told you. That I, Jesus, was calling you, Louisa, to live in the kingdom of my divine will. That I, Jesus, was giving you, Louisa, the special and unique mission to make the divine will known. So that as I myself said the Our Father, and the Holy Church says still now, thy kingdom come, that is your will, Heavenly Father, be done on earth as it is in heaven. He says, it does not say in the Our Father that this kingdom is on earth, but it says come. And I would not have composed a prayer if I were not be able to obtain its effects. So therefore, in order to reach this, was I not to elect another woman whom the infernal serpent so much fears as he, by means of the first woman who ruined my, my humanity, who ruined humanity to me. So Eve uh, did this. So I picked Mary uh, to be the mother of God, another woman. And the first woman ruined humanity for me. That was Eve. And I, to confound him, made use of another woman, Mary, to make up for the ruin he caused and make the good that he tried to destroy arise for all. And here then is the necessity. Here then is the preparations of the graces of my visits and my communications to you, Louisa. So he says, this is the difficulty people have. We had Mary. Why? Why? Is Jesus doing this now? This sounded bad to those who have well, and therefore doubts and difficulties, that it cannot be possible, that among so many other great saints, no one has lived in the kingdom of my divine will. Now, this is, this is Jesus saying this. No one obtained the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. They learned how to do the will of God, but not live in the will of God as Jesus and Mary. So it is she alone that is preferred to all. And when they have read that I, Jesus, place a you near the Blessed Mother, the Sovereign Queen, so that having, she, having lived in the kingdom of my divine fiat, you might imitate her, or imitate Our Lady, wanting to make of you a copy that resembles Our Lady, like mother, like daughter. I placed you in her hands. This is the difficulty. That Our Lady might guide you. Our Lady might assist you. Our Lady might protect you so that you might imitate her in everything. And this is what seems so absurd to them in sinisterly misrepresenting the sense. They spoke as if I had told you that you, Louisa, were another queen. And then these are the words of Jesus. How much nonsense. I did not say that you are like the, he says, did I not say that you are like the celestial queen? That, but that I want you similar to her. And just as I've said to many other souls dear to me, that I wanted them similar to me, but with this, they would not become another God like me. So the similarity is what God is looking for. And you, the daughter's, look like their mothers, act like their mothers, sound like their mothers. But they're not the mother. There's a similarity that's there. I said this to many of the souls who are dear to me. I wanted them similar to me. But 
with this, they would not become a god like me. And since the, the since then, since the celestial lady is the true king of the kingdom of my true queen of the kingdom of my divine will, it is her task to help. It is her task to teach the fortunate souls who want to live and enter into this gift of the divine will. So here. Who would teach? Who taught Louisa? It was always it was always Jesus and Mary. He says, "By this, these people who are upset, uh, as if I did not have the power to elect whom I God want, and when I God want." But after all, time will say everything. And just as they cannot deny that the Virgin of Nazareth was my mother, so they shall not be able to deny that I have elected you, Louisa for the sole purpose of making my divine will known, that through you, Louisa Picaretta, I shall obtain that thy, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom reign on earth as it is in heaven. It may have its fulfillment. So here is something that is so beautiful. Jesus says, it's foolish to say, anybody says, well, Louisa is just like Our Lady. No, she's the little daughter, Our Lady's mother and queen. There's a similarity, yes, like all daughters and mothers. With this, she's Our Lady. What does he say? Our Lady is teaching Louisa, guiding Louisa um, uh, to enter and to live in this, this, this great gift of the divine world. You, Louisa, the sole purpose of making my divine world known through you, Louisa, because of what Jesus and Mary taught you, I, God, will now obtain the fulfillment of the prayer of the Our Father. That, that uh, again, in no way did Jesus say, Louisa is another Mother Mary. She's another little mama. Like we have, we had Mama, uh, uh, Mother Teresa. We had Ma Mother, um, uh, EWTN, Mother Angelica. We have not Mother Gabriella. It's, 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 God is so happy that we have someone to guide us, lead us, direct us. I'm 20, 29, 1, 3, 31. I continue my acts in the divine fiat and my poor mind pauses the little house of Nazareth. Now, the little house of Nazareth is so essential. This is what uh, becoming a third order of Benedictine oblate is, is about. Entering, making your home a little home of Nazareth. Those, those prayer groups, everyone should, in their prayer group should have a picture of the, the holy family of Luis, a whole little family of Nazareth. This is what, this is what it means. Now, now uh, Our Lady of America, the, the uh, um, oratory of the little family of Nazareth in, in, in Rome City, Indiana. It's, this is essential. This is essential for us that our houses become like the little house of Nazareth. Why? We're the queen of heaven and the celestial king Jesus. And wa watching this, living there with St. Joseph, possessing uh, the, the, the kingdom of Jesus and Mary, uh, living in the kingdom of the divine will. These, this living in the divine will, uh, uh, he, Joseph, had the honor of being there in the presence of Jesus and Mary, who lived in the divine will, Jesus and Mary. And that's why, you know, people say, well, Joseph, you're, 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 you're not talking about Joseph. Well, Jesus, we have a whole thing of what Jesus says about Joseph, and it's so beautiful, it's so perfect. Go to uh, LouisaPicaretta.me, read the whole uh, chapter on, on Joseph, how important he is. But the newborn of the divine will, the firstborn of the divine will, is Louisa. We see that in what Jesus said. He said, he said um, the greatest man born of woman is John the Baptist. The least in the kingdom, the littlest in the kingdom, is this newborn, Louisa Picaretta. And that's what it says. The greatest is, is John the Baptist, but the least in the kingdom is greater than him. Why? We're not talking about re just redemption now. We're talking about redemption and sanctification. Now, this is this is the thing that's so amazing and why we know it's coming. The kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. So this kingdom is not foreign to the earth. The house of Nazareth, the little family that Louisa lived in, belonged to this kingdom and kept it in full force. 
But while I was thinking about this, my great King Jesus told me, my daughter, indeed, the kingdom of my divine will has existed upon earth, and therefore it is the sure hope that it shall return again to its full force. Now, the full force isn't here yet. Jesus tells us what's going to happen. Each little house of Nazareth, he, he's going to gather together. See, everything has to go according to his plan. He says, our house of Nazareth was the true kingdom. However, we were without peoples. Now, you must know that each creature is a kingdom. And therefore, the soul who lets the divine will reign within herself can be called a little kingdom of the supreme fiat. So she is a tiny little house of the Nazareth. Your, your prayer group is a tiny little house of Nazareth, which we have upon earth. And though little, since our divine will is in that soul, the soul wants this, reigning, heaven is not closed for her. She observes the same laws of the celestial fatherland. She loves with the same love. She feeds herself with the same foods from up there. This is the first breath. This is the book of heaven which is incorporated into the kingdom of our interminable and endless regions. Now, in order to form the great kingdom of our divine will upon earth, first we shall make many little tiny houses of Nazareth. That's the people that are reading the book of heaven. That's your prayer groups. That's where you gather to pray uh, together. That, that is the souls who shall want to know the divine will in order to let the divine will reign within themselves. He says this, I myself and the sovereign queen Mary are the head of these little tiny houses. So to see what God's getting ready. So therefore you have to have a picture of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. You have to have a statue of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Uh, it's to remind us that the head of this house is Jesus. Amen. We have been the first to possess this kingdom on earth. And it is our divine right that we shall not surrender to anyone anyone else to be the directors of these homes. Then, with these tiny little houses, repeaters of our house of Nazareth, we shall form many little states of ours and many little provinces. And then after they have formed well and ordered, and ordered like many little kingdoms of our divine will, this is what he's going to do. He's going to fuse together and shall form one single kingdom of one great people. Therefore, in order to have our greatest works, our ways of acting is to begin first alone, one-on-one -on -one with you, Louisa, one single creature. And then we shall form, when we have formed this one, we shall make Louisa the channel in order to enclose our works to three, two or three more creatures. And then we will expand. Then we will form small groups worldwide. And then we will expand them so much as to take in the whole entire world. That's what's happening right now. Great. Things are going to happen. God's going to do this. It's not you or me. It's going to do it. We're nobodies. We're nothings. God is going to do this. And therefore, we will make Louisa the channel. He says to enclose our works so that two or three or more creatures, then we'll expand forming small groups. Then we'll expand it so much so to embrace the entire world. Our work begins in the isolation of God and one soul and ends by continuing their life in the midst of the entire peoples of God. And when there is a beginning of a work of ours, this trying God, it is a sure sign that it shall not die at birth. At the most, it may live hidden for some time, and that's been a hundred years, but now it's going to change. Everything's going to change. But then it shall go out and shall have its perennial life. That's what's coming. Therefore, always forward. Do not, I do not want you, he says, he says, do I want you in my divine will? Don't you want this? Always forward. It's not looking back. It's not doom and gloom. Before, let me just tell you this. If, if it is important for the world, he told Louisa. That's sanctification. He says very clearly, there's going to be a large catastrophe and those souls that don't want God are not going to be there. Our job is to pray for everyone and for everything. I, that's why every night when you go to sleep, before you go to bed, when you pray the act of contrition, pray in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. So, Lord, have mercy on, on me and, and all of humanity, past, present, and future. 
Lord, have mercy on you and on mercy on your children. It's our job is to is to pray the prayer of Jesus in you. It's to enter into this abundant life. And and again, pray for the angels to seal your communities. That's what's coming. The holy angels are here to seal the communities. No harm can come to them. When I hear of the doom and gloom, I said, see, that's, that's too bad for them. The doom and gloom is for those who don't want the divine will. What is the divine will going to be like? Read the book of heaven. What, what's, what's the illumination going to be like? Read the book of heaven. I, I've had people say to me, oh, the divine will, that's, that's thousands of years from now. That's not what Jesus says. He says to prove it's coming as you have the writings. And he did say, when the writings come out, the world will change. The writings came out in 1996. Has the world changed much? I remember going to airports and we could walk to the plane. Your family could walk to the plane, basically. Now you're stopped at the door. You're searched. You're probed. Sure, you're... And then, and then, and then you're watched. There was a time then when there was freedom. Again, the evil one knows what's coming, and he's trying to make us very upset. If you're worried, fearful, anxious, complaining, negative, the divine will is not yours. You say you might say it is, but you're not acting like that. Like, not, not acting like a free person, a happy person, a joy-filled person. The kingdom is coming. If you're not praying for the angels to to seal the community of God so nothing can happen to you, you got to begin. It's a new beginning that's coming. Great things are coming. Amazing things are going to happen. And God is asking us to witness this. This is the best part. 529, 630, 1931. I was thinking about the Holy Divine Will. How can its kingdom ever come upon earth? Giving the tempestuous times and the threatening storms, the sad conditions of the human generations, it seems impossible. This is the doom and gloom. Sad conditions. It seems impossible. And it seems to me that the indifference and lack of disposition of those who are really said to be good increases the impossibility. For they have no interest in making known a will so holy. I mean, I've had great friends of mine, good priests of mine. I don't need this. I'm happy with that I'm doing. This, this is where it says this. It says very, very clearly. It seems to be the, in, the indifference, the lack of disposition of those who are said to be good increases the impossibility. There's no interest in making known a will so holy. And his will wants to give the great grace of wanting to reign in the midst of humanity. How can a good ever have life if it is not known? But while I was thinking of this, now this is these, these are our thoughts that were given to Louisa. Jesus surprising me, lovable Jesus surprising me, told me, my daughter, that which is impossible in the human fields, everything, listen to this, is possible to God. That's where our hope is. That's where our confidence is. He's our Lord, he's our Savior, he's our Master, he's our King, he's our everything. So he says, you must know that the greatest grace that we gave to Adam in his creation was that he could enter into our divine will to be able to admit his human acts. Uh, uh, since the human will was small and the divine will was great, it was therefore the virtue of absorbing all the small acts of Adam into the great, of changing the human into the divine. That, that's the likeness of God that Adam lost. He had it. So at the beginning of creation, Adam entered into our order of our divine will, and Adam did many of his acts while well, by withdrawing from our divine will, he went from outside of it, from inside of it to outside of it. His human acts operated in our divine will. He remained as a pledge and right for holy humanity, as the beginning and the foundation of a divine kingdom that he acquired in the divine will. Whatever is done in the divine will is indelible. God himself cannot delete a single act done by the human in the supreme will, the supreme fiat. Now, since Adam was the first man to be created, it came as a consequence that he, being as though the root, being the trunk of all human generations, they would inherit, almost like branches, what the root and the trunk of the tree of what Adam had possessed. 
And just as all humanity, as though by nature, inherited the seed of original sin, so do they inherit his first acts done in our most holy divine will that constituted the beginning and the right of the kingdom of our divine will for humanity. To confirm this came the humanity of the Immaculate Virgin. To confirm this is, is the Blessed Virgin Mary. To operate and to follow the acts of Adam in order to fulfill whole and entire the kingdom of the divine will. To be the first heiress of the kingdom so holy. To give to her dear children the right for them to possess it. And to complete all of this came my holy humanity. That by divine, by nature, possessed the divine will. That Adam, innocent and the sovereign queen, possessed by grace. In order to confirm the seal of its acts of its kingdom of the divine will. So this kingdom exists in reality because li the living humanities have formed their acts in it. First Adam and then the blessed of God. And that's necessary materials in order to form this kingdom to give to other humanities the right to possess it. And in order to confirm it, I, Jesus, taught the Our Father so that with this prayer, they might dispose themselves to acquire the rights to receive the divine will. And God might feel as though the duty to give the divine will back to humanity. By teaching the Our Father, Jesus said, I place in, in their hands the right to receive the divine will. I, Jesus, committed myself to giving the kingdom so holy. And every time the, the soul recites the Our Father, the soul acquires a sort of right to re-enter into its kingdom. First, because the prayer taught by me that contains the value of my prayer. Second, because of the love of our divinity towards humanity is so great that we try and God pay attention to everything. We try and God notice everything, even the little acts, the holy desires, the little prayers to requite them, the great graces of the kingdom. And we can say that they are pretexts, occasions that we try and God keep looking for to say to the soul, you have done this, and we give this to you. You have done the small. We, triune God, give you the great. See, it's it's an exchange. Uh, again, the likeness of God is to do what God does. When you take a breath of the divine will, Jesus, breathe in my breathing. Jesus is doing that, but it feels like you're doing it. Jesus is doing it in you. In you. you, you he takes us at our word. Again, there is such joy and such happiness knowing the divine will. Therefore, the kingdom of the divine will exists. And if I have spoken to you, Louisa, so much about my divine will, those who have been nothing other than the pre preparations of the many centuries of my holy church, the prayers, the sacrifices, the continuous recitations of the Our Father that have inclined our goodness, the goodness of God, to choose you, Louisa, a creature, in order to manifest to you the many knowledges of our divine will and its great prodigies. In this way, I, Jesus, bound my divine will to humanity, giving them new pledges of its kingdom. And as you, Louisa, listened, and that's what's happening to us, number one, and tried, number two, to model yourself over my teachings that I gave you, I have formed new bonds to bind humanity back to my divine will. So we, we're doing the same thing with Louisa. As Louisa, we're listening to Jesus. We're reading, we're studying, we're putting this into practice of how and why this kingdom is coming. We're modeling ourselves after the teachings that Jesus gave to Louisa to have this fullness of the Catholic faith. I mean, that's the thing. See, the, the, the saints taught us, our dogma doctors teach us how redemption, how, how to live this life. And now Jesus is saying, I'm going to teach you how to enter into sanctification. I'm going to teach you how, little by little, to sanctify yourself. By how? No more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity. To the point of no more sin. To enter into the, the, the image and likeness of the new Adam and the new Eve. This, this new and divine way of holiness that's coming to the earth. So he says, you must know that I am, he says, I am the God of everyone. And when I do a good, I never do it isolated. I do it for all of humanity, unless someone who does not want it, want to take it, does not take it. 
when a creature corresponds to me, I look at that soul, not as one alone, but I look at belonging to the whole human family. That's what he sees when he looks at Louisa. Now it needs to be known, Jesus says. Therefore, the good of one is communicated to the others. Now, if the kingdom exists, live, lived humanities have possessed it and lived life in it. That's that's Adam before the fall and are they and, and now Jesus, the Son of God. I mean, this is his, this is the divine will. My will wants to reign in the midst of humanity again. My very knowledge is that I've given to you these truths, these lessons, these manifestations that I've given to you, Louisa, are clear notes then of how you can think and then how that can you think that is impossible for the kingdom to come? To me, to God, he says, everything is possible. I shall make use of the very storms. That's what we're going through right now. And the new events that are coming, that's what's happening right now, in order to prepare those who must occupy themselves with making my divine will known. That's each and every one of us. We have to know this. Your family doesn't want it. Your neighbors don't want it. Your coworkers don't want it. Who wants it? You want it. I want this to be made known to you, Jesus says. It's this intimacy that you have with Jesus as you read, as you study, as you put this into practice. The storms are here to pur pur purify the bad air, to get rid of the noxious things. And therefore, I shall dispose everything. I, as God, shall dispose everything. I know how to do everything. The times, uh, I have the times at my disposal. This is what Jesus is telling us. So let your Jesus do this. And you shall see how my divine law shall be known and fulfilled. Great surprises are coming. Amazing things are going to happen. Things unheard of, unheard of prodigies, the healings that are coming to humanity. It's very, very close. Hang on to your hat. It's, 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 it's the most beautiful time to be alive. The most beautiful. 529, 713, 1931. You must know, my daughter, that the passport, now this is important, the passport to enter into my kingdom is the resolute will of never doing your own human will, even at the cost of one's life and of any sacrifice asked by God. What's the passport? We have the resolution, never doing your own human will. And whatever is needed, it's fiat. Whatever, whatever sacrifice is fiat. Again, I did it my way is the worst song in the world. It's, I'm going to, I'll sacrifice anyone and everything to do it my way. No, no. The cost of life and any sacrifice that God asks of you. And again, he's going to test us. He's going to see what we want, but he's going to be with us. So he says, this resolute act, but true, is this like the signature that one puts on the passport in order to set off in the kingdom of my divine will. While the creature signs it in order to set off, listen to this, God signs it as well in order to receive the soul. It's, it's, it's an agreement. It's a resolute agreement. I'm not going to do my human will. What's the human will? It's what you say when you go to confession. This is what I thought, what I said, what I did, what I thought. I don't want to live like this. I want, I want to make a firm purpose of amendment to avoid the new occasions of sin. You sign this and God signs it to receive you. The latter signature of God shall have much value. And the whole of heaven shall go to meet that soul in order to receive that soul into the kingdom of the divine fiat in which they already live. This is the saints in heaven. And they shall be all eyes over this soul who from earth holds as life and as the kingdom that same will that they hold in heaven. But the passport is not enough. One must study the language. He says, the book of heaven is the language of heaven. You have to become fluent in this. It's not reading it once. What do I do now? Read it. Reread it. Study it. Put it into Every time you do it, every time you read it, he expands your capacity to know more, to, to learn more, 
to live more of this gift. You must study the language. You must study the ways. You must study the kingdoms of the, the customs of this divine kingdom. And these are the knowledges. These are the lessons. These are the manifestations. These are the truths. These are the prerogatives. These are the beauties, the value that my divine will contains. It's infinite. Swim. Somebody says, I can't remember it. Let's just dive into the infinite ocean and swim. Start swimming. Enjoy. Begin to enjoy this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies. He says, otherwise it would be like a stranger who would neither take love nor be loved. If he does not sacrifice in making of it a study in order to be able to speak with the same language and does not adapt himself to the customs of those who live in it, this kingdom so holy, he shall live isolated because not understanding him, they shall shun him. And isolation makes no one happy. In addition to this, one must pass from the study to the practice of what was learned. And after a length of that practice, at last, he is declared a citizen of the kingdom of my most holy divine will. And then he shall enjoy all the happiness that are, all the happinesses that are in a kingdom so holy, even more. They shall be able to, they shall be his own properties. And he shall acquire the right to live in the divine will as his own fatherland. We haven't seen anything yet. We're right at the beginning. We're scratching the surface of this. It's a new beginning for humanity. 529, 20, 10, 26, 31. My daughter, life, sanctity consists in two acts. God giving his will and the creature receiving it. He breathes into us. We breathe out. We breathe back to him, his gift. And we say, Jesus, breathe in my breathing. I want to give back to the Father the way you gave back to the Father. My, my return is, is, is nothing. It's dust. But you and me, Jesus, give back to the Father this, this divine life, this divine life, this divine love. He says, the life, the sanctity is two acts, God giving and the receipt, which creature receiving. And after she is formed within herself, the life of that divine act, after she has received, she gives it back again as an act of her human will and then receives it again. Giving and receiving, receiving and giving. Everything is in this when Jesus is there. If you're giving back to God your breath, you know, it seems like the Lord would want to say, you know, use some mouthwash. You know, I want to, I want to breathe in the breath of the new Adam, of the new Eve. I want you to breathe out the, the life of the new Adam and the new Eve. Get back again uh, from a divine perspective. That, that's what the divine will is. Jesus breathe in my breathing. Jesus beat in my heart beating. Jesus dance in my dancing, sing in my singing. Giving and receiving, receiving and giving is everything in this. God could not give more than his continued act of his divine will to the, to the soul. And the soul could not give more back to God for as much as it is possible for a creature than his divine will back to God, Jesus in us breathing in our breathing. It's Jesus receiving into herself the formation of a divine life from Jesus, the new Adam, Mary, the new Eve. So he says, my divine fiat takes dominion and forms in the soul its kingdom and the whole interior of the soul forms as though the people of the kingdom of the divine will. Now, this is, this is the best part. As you read the book of heaven, as you breathe in the divine will, everybody in your family is changing. Everyone in the world is changing. Everyone past, present, and future is changing. This, this is not human. <laughs> this is Jesus in us doing it. And he says, I want, he says to Louisa, I want your your skin, I want you to be clothing to me so that I can I can reign on earth again. This is why I created humanity, to be in God's image and likeness. It's, it seems like we're doing it, but he says, I'm doing it. So he says, number one, he says, 
this, this formation, this interior. It's number one, the intelligence, faithful people that glorifies in being directed by the sovereign command, command commandant of the divine fiat. This is Jesus, the intelligence, the faithful people. This is the first thing, your intellect directed by God himself, Jesus himself of the divine fiat. The crowd of thoughts that presses around and inspire to know more and more of the divine will, to love the great king that sits as on a throne in the center of the intelligence of the soul, the intellect of the soul, the memory of the soul, uh, the intellect, memory, and will. You see, it's who, who is your sovereign commandant? Is it, is, is it Jesus? Is it Mary? And, and he's inspiring us to know more and more, to love the great king, the great queen that sits on the throne, the center of our intelligence. This is what God is waiting for. This is the divine will. When somebody says, well, you're doing this and you're doing that. No, I'm, I'm getting out of the way so Jesus can move. It's not to be born again. It's to be born again at each instant. Jesus alive in us at each instant. Mary alive in us each instant. The new Adam and the new Eve, not the old Adam and the old Eve, not the first Adam and the first Eve, but the new Adam and the new Eve. To know more and more, to learn, to study, to put this into practice, more and more, to know, love, and possess this gift of gifts. This is our job. This is why we were created at this time. A new and divine way of holiness is coming to all of humanity. Number two, the desires, the affections, the heartbeats that are unleashed from the heart to increase the number of people in my kingdom. Every, that's why every prayer in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. Every heartbeat in the name of everyone and everything past, present, and future. Every breath in the name of everyone and everyone past, present, and future. Every desire in the name of everyone and everyone past, present, and future. Every affection in the name of everyone and everyone past, present, and future. Unleash from this love, increase the number of people in your family, in your nation, in, in, in the world, and in, in, in past, present, and future. Everything's being redone. We haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen anything yet. And Jesus says, oh, how they throng around the throne. You're bringing everybody before me. Mother Teresa brought one human at a time. Into the, into the orphanage, one baby that was dying into the orphanage. The divine will, it's the life of Jesus and Mary. You bring everyone, past, present, and future. This is what sanctification is. It's not about being good and holy and saintly in a human level. It's to enter into the sanctity of sanctities, Jesus tells Louisa. It's the attention, this, this throne of people, all stand at attention to receive the divine orders from the, the, the command... What did he say? The sovereign commandant, the divine orders of Jesus. What is this? Breathe. In, let me breathe in your breathing. Beat. Let your heart beat in your heart beating. Jesus, Jesus, let me become alive in you. It says, the attention to receive the divine orders, even to lay down your life in order to execute them. The, the commands of God. What an obedient what an orderly people. It is a people of the kingdom of my fiat. There are no contentions. There is no differences, but the whole crowd of people of the interior of this fortunate soul, Louisa, and, and us now, who wants only one thing alone. It is like a fierce army that the creature wants only one thing alone, the fortress of the kingdom of my divine will. And then when the interior of the creature becomes all my people, the, 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 the light that he breathed into Louisa, that we breathe in becomes all the people. It pops out of the interior, increases the people of the words, people of the works, people of the steps. It can be said that each act formed by the celestial people contains the password written in with gold characters, will of God. This it's, it's not our will. It's we're one. God wants us one with him. It's his will. And when this crowd of people moves to exercise each of its own office 
They put it in the, on the front flag with the motto Fiat. The, the front of the flag, okay. This is something that Jesus says to Louisa, where is your flag? I know I had one around here somewhere. I, I tried to look it for it the last time. I set it over here just in case and stuff. The word fiat, the flag fiat, fiat, fiat. Followed by the words written with vivid light. We belong to the king of the supreme fiat. This is our flag. See then, each creature who lets yourself be dominated by my most holy divine will forms a people for the kingdom of God. This is what this is the life was breathed into Louisa. Now it's being breathed into us. Line 30, 1 3, 1932. My abandonment continues in the divine fiat, but I felt worried by the thought. How shall this kingdom of my divine fiat ever be able to come? Sin abounds. That so true. Evil gets worse. So true. It seems to me that humanity does not dispose, is not disposed to receive such a great good. So much so that there is not a soul. These are the words of Louisa. Good as they may be, who truly wants to occupy himself with making known what regards the divine will. Are you making it known to yourself? He says, I can't find, Louisa says, I can't find a soul. The divine will is everything for them. There's so many other things that they're doing. Oh, I got to get ready for this. I got to get ready for that. Oh, there's going to be a game on television tomorrow. Oh, there's going to be a movie the other, next night. Oh, we're going to have, there's not a soul, as good as they may be, who truly wants to occupy themselves with making known, learning about the divine will, what regards to the divine will. Oh, I, I really love the prayers of St. Teresa. I do too. But Jesus says there's only one book that will transform a soul, the book of heaven. Do we believe that? I don't think we believe it because we're not reading them. As you read, as you study, everything, everything changes. And you read it again, it's brand new. You read it again, and it's brand new. You read it again, and it's brand new. Why? He keeps on expanding our capacity to understand this gift of gifts. There is not a soul, as good as they may be, who truly wants to occupy himself with making known to themselves, not your family, your family doesn't want to know it, what regards the divine will. If God does not operate a prodigy of his divine omnipotence, the kingdom of the divine fiat may be in heaven, but as for earth, it is useless to think about it. But while I was thinking about this and other things, my beloved Jesus, making his usual visit to my soul, told me, my daughter, everything is possible for us trying God. Write that word on, uh, on a piece of paper, tape it to your mirror in your bathroom. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing you see, everything is possible for God. The impossibilities, the difficulties, the insurmountable ob obstacles of humanity melts before a supreme majesty like snow in front of a burning sun. Everything is in whether we try and got it, all the rest is nothing. We got to get to that point. We got to get to that point. We're going to see some tough things. Absolutely. Everything is whether God wants it. All the rest is nothing. So again, our, our Lord is asking us. Our Lord is pleading with us. Are you worried, fearful, anxious, planning, and negative? And he says, stop it. That's a command from Jesus. He wants us, he wants us to stop because he has great things in store for us. Amazing things in store for us. And all that he's asking is our fiat. Who's the commandant of your life? Who is it? Is it Jesus? Is it Mary? Is it through little Louisa? Jesus, Jesus asks us that. He, he pleads with us. Who, 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 who are the ones who are living a life of peace, joy, and happiness amid all the turmoil? Or are you getting ready for doom and gloom? I, I look at this and it's almost as if people have given up and they said, well, it's doom and gloom. I have to go through. That's not what Jesus tells Louisa. It's coming, yes, but it's not our life. 
He says, I want you to begin to live this life of peace, joy, and happiness now. And he says, he's going to test us to see in all situations, is it peace, joy, and happiness, or is it doom and gloom? You have to, you have to get what you're looking for. You have to get what you're anticipating for. Are you anticipating heaven? Are you anticipating eternity, enjoying the beatific vision? Is this your life? Is this your Catholic life? That's why our lady weeps, our Lord weeps. No, no one seems to understand that God has done everything, shed every drop of blood on the, on the cross. And now he's giving everything to humanity. And it's a, you type, we pipe to a tune and you do not sing. We sang you a dirge and you did not wail. That's who we are. Stop it. We got, we got to enter into this abundant life. Good things are coming. Amazing things are going to happen. And all that God is asking of us is, are you ready? We'll be back in an hour and 15 minutes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.